Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this tutorial, we will continue our discussion on this open API. And in the previous tutorial, I mentioned to you that the open API spec, when you look at it, it contains three main parts. The first part that you see is the meta information. The second part is your path. And the third part is your reusable components you define. So now let's talk about what all is available in your meta information. So the meta information basically is going to have the API title. It's going to have the version of your API and it will also will have the server URL means what is your actual the whole endpoint that you're going to hit and all the paths are going to be relative to that server URL and if there is any more descriptive information you can add in your meta information and also the type of authentication you're going to use and is it a basic auth or all of that you will define and it will consider as part of meta information. So this is how the meta information is. Now, first thing that you have defined is the open API tag and the version, and you also have a 2.0 version of open API. And then you have another info tag that gives you information about your API. So this version and this version is different. This version defines the open API version that you are using. And this version is the API version. So your API can also have multiple versions, right? So let's say you keep building, enhancing your APIs. You came up with version one, then you have another version two. So then this version is for the version of your API because open API is used to describe your APIs, right? And then what this API, a little bit description about your APIs. Now the server, the URL, the actual endpoint. And then if there is any authentication is needed, you're going to define over here. And then you have your security schemas. If you're going to define means what kind of authentication that is also comes as part of your meta information. The next important thing is your path items. The path items are the endpoints of your API under which you can specify your HTTP verbs for manipulating the resources in the desired manner. Now, if you know these HTTP methods that you see, like a get method basically is only to fetch the information from the server. It is never going to update anything on the server. When you are making a post call, it is basically to create something new on the server, which never existed. So as part of the previous example, when we did a post call, it is used to create a new employee in the source application. That employee was never there. You created something new. That is the purpose of a post method. The purpose of a get method is just to fetch some information from the server. The use of a post is to create something. Then you have is the patch. That is basically to update something on the server. The delete is to delete something on the server. So these methods have a meaning. The get to fetch information, post to create something new, delete is to remove something or delete something onto the uh, server. And then you have patches to update something. Let's say you want to update the employee ID, or let's say you want to update the username of your artist. That is when you're going to use a update method, right? When you're defining your path items, let's say one path item they have defined is slash artist means that is the endpoint. But the complete endpoint is going to be this URL slash your artist. That is going to be your complete URL. And then what you have here is you are doing a get call. Your get call means you are fetching list of artists this get is going to give you your artist means it's going to give you a complete list of artists in your request there is no request body in this case right the response is something you have to define right so here when you're defining your path the response is something you have to define and you always have to define at least one status response so if you see here, the get method under this artist endpoint is lets the consumer of the API obtain the details of a list of artists from this endpoint of your database, right? Every response would need at least one HTTP status code to describe the kind of responses a consumer is likely to expect. So you always have to define minimum one HTTP status code, means it can be either 
200, 400, you can define 200 also, 404 also, whatever you want to, but you have to define at least one HTTP status code in order to make a proper open API format. Now, the description gives the detail on what the response of the API would be. In our sample code, if you have see here, they are defining two responses. One is 200 and the other one is 400. So the 200 means it's a successful response and this 400 means it's going to be an invalid request. Okay. If your API is returning 200, that means it's a success. If your API is returning a 400 response, that means something was wrong with your request. It means you were not either passed the right parameter, you did not use the proper authentication. It can be any number of reasons. If you see here, your 200, the content is application slash JSON. So you're defining how your response looks like and it tells you it is of the type array. Array means it's a list. So if you see here, it's an array and it's an array of artists. So this whole request is going to return you the list of artists that are there. And for each of the artists, it is going to return you the name of the artist it's going to return you the username of the artist it is going to return you the number of albums they have published and also the genre of your artist so all of these things this is what you're defining in your 200 status code you're defining that okay if there if this api is returning or if this get call is returning if 200 response the response is going to be a list of artists and for each of the artists you are going to get an artist name property name is this is the genre this is the albums and this is the username and then if you see here this is your 400 status code and all it is going to have a message and that is of the type string now sometimes in your get call itself, you probably have to pass some parameters, the query parameters. The query parameters are the parameters that you're going to add to the URL of your request. Let's say into your endpoint, you want to add some parameters. Those becomes your query parameter. So for example, if you look at this previous call, it will return you all the artists that are there. Now, instead of that, let's say you only want 20 artists to be returned and let's say from the page number three, that is your offset. So then what you're doing is you're adding two query parameters to your request. Now, how will your API spec will change? This is how your API spec will change. Everything in the meta will remain the same. The path also, the slash artist will remain the same. The get, it's a get call that is also going to remain the same. But now you are seeing something called as parameters. Now, when I define something like this, that means I am defining my parameters and how many parameters I'm passing. I'm passing two parameters. The limit is the name of one parameter and the other parameter that I'm passing is offset. And then what I'm defining is what is the type of these parameters? So limit is of the type integer. And then the second parameter is offset. What is the type of this? That is also integer. So this is how your spec will change if you have to add some query parameters. If, now in this case, the response is the same. Response is exactly the same as your previous get call. So then what we can do is these things that are coming repetitively, you can put them in your reusable section and you only define it one time and then you can refer them over and over. So this is how you can define your path if you are making a get. But sometimes what happens is you might have to do a post call or in a put call or in a patch call you will have a request body as well. And how your spec will look like in that case, we will talk about it in the next tutorial. So I'm going to see you then. Thank you so much.